All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's continue. So next up, we deep dive deep dive in the world of sleep. And I think like Demo has been devoting all of his free time to the world of biohacking and quantified self during the one and a half last year. So he has pretty good understanding of where we're going. And also uh, co-authoring Biohackers Handbook now with uh, Jaakko Halmetoja, who's actually going to give the next lecture after Teemu, and then with uh, medical doctor Olli Sovijärvi. So next up, Teemu Arina. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, so my talk today is hacking while you sleep. And it's sort of interesting that I have more data of my night than I actually have of my working day. And uh, uh, that provides a pretty interesting perspective on what is possible. But let me tell you first about uh, Biohackers Handbook, what we are working on with my colleagues Jaakko Halmetoja and Oli Soviari. So I'm the technology geek um, and sort of uh, was able to use biohacking, quantify itself to to uh, first treat myself uh, from a stress-related uh, uh, disease and uh, then actually also start upgrading different areas of my life. And this is actually what I've been doing uh, for most of my life. Uh, for the last 15 years as an entrepreneur, um, I've been interested in learning. I've been interested in the most effective ways to push the boundaries of your mind. And I was too centered on my mind alone, you know, thinking about how do you Google effectively or uh, produce information and so on. So I started looking into uh, the bodily aspect through uh, the stressful disease I had. And sleep hacking was uh, one of the most interesting things because that was actually related. The origin of, of my problem was uh, rooted in uh, sleeping for half a year for like four hours a night. And, uh, but I was able, able to overcome uh, that habit, but also uh, to take things on a new level. Biohackers Handbook is for people who are living in the zeitgeist, living in these times we are in, trying to cope with increasing amounts of information, increasing amounts of pressure uh, from work, uh, there is the media is producing all kinds of things, uh, the companies, the, the management is asking a lot of things. And how do you really just get, get through your working week? It's a challenge for many. And many of you might have tried to do these kind of uh, lifestyle changes, you know, for example, to move more or sleep more or uh, clear out your calendar. Uh, but oftentimes you s uh, basically are drawn back into square one and uh, you have to start again. So Biohackers Handbook is really looking into how can you upgrade different areas of your life. So what would be the 20% that would produce 80% of the results? So instead of looking like the perfect diet that you have to follow the 67 steps and do every, every single one of them or you're not gonna be healthy, we are more like looking into what would be individually for you the best uh, solution. And this is something you have to discover yourself. No one is going to write a book about this. And Biohackers Handbook is really just about giving you, as a handbook, some tools that might be effective on, on these different areas. And um, at biohackerit, biohackerit.fi, you can uh, subscribe to our newsletter. So, so go, go ahead. And I will be sending you the sleep chapter uh, for free. It's about 50 pages, uh, well-researched, uh, things of how do you use technological, biological tools to upgrade your sleep and how do you use quantified self methods to then measure if you are really getting the results that you are looking for. So let's get started about sleep. Just like Dalai Lama said that sleep is the best meditation. Uh, all of us know that you know the day is going to be ruined if you don't get the perfect sleep. Any kind of biohack you can think of in terms of uh, nutrition or, or exercise is, is pointless if you don't get enough sleep. But it's a good question, what is enough sleep? Is it really seven to eight hours? If you have a certain genetical um, mutation, you probably can do with two hours uh, or less. In some cases, you can also look at how long does it take for you to actually fall asleep? For many of us, it might take even like 30 or 40 minutes. 
So how can you fall asleep in a couple of minutes? So that already saves you almost an hour. Uh, and, and how do you woke up, you know, in a, in a, in a uh, rested state and ready to kick ass? So there are many things that we can dive into here. Uh, but we can be pretty sure that uh, if you're looking just from the biohacker's point of view, sleep is an essential tool. So it really increases your physical performance, it increases your cognitive function, and uh, from the health perspective, it's absolutely essential. If you look at the health considerations here, uh, if you don't sleep, uh, the different inflammation markers in your body will increase. For example, C-reactive protein will likely rise. Your immune function will not be on uh, the top of its game. And uh, also different um, symptoms uh, and markers related to your heart health as well as uh, your insulin response uh, uh, in terms of blood sugar will be impaired if you don't sleep enough. And, uh, um, but from a really from a high performing person's perspective, the impact that not sleeping has on your mental and physical performance is pretty obvious. We have all experienced that. But there are ways also how you can hack that uh, so that you will have a little bit more alertness and, and uh, mental capability during the day. So let's start by looking into the key systems. What are the sort of complex systems in terms of sleep that you would be looking into if you wanted to upgrade your sleep, if you wanted to hack your uh, sleep? So let's start from the different phases of sleep. And, and this research um, was, uh, uh, it's a pretty new uh, thing in a way. So the first electric signals that would portray the different stages of sleep were discovered in the 19th century around, uh, I don't remember exactly, but in the beginning or around so. Uh, Sigmund Freud already was interested in dreams, but we didn't know about REM sleep in his days, uh, in the end of the 18, 1800s, and we didn't know about the different stages of sleep. But he was already thinking about dreams. And many philosophers have also been thinking into what, what the dream world is really all about. So um, then some American researchers discovered REM sleep. And, uh, and uh, um, if you look at your night sleep, the most essential part from a recovery perspective is uh, uh, the deep sleep, uh, delta sleep, delta brain waves are produced during that time. It's the first about four hours of your night. If you don't get that, if you wake up during that, those cycles, most likely you are not going to get the deep sleep anymore that night. So it's really essential that you sleep at least interrupted, uninterrupted for the four, first uh, four hours to feel rested. Now, REM sleep has also been seen to be significant and important. So if uh, uh, animal, in animal studies they have seen that if they deprive an animal of REM sleep, all kinds of uh, health issues arise. So this, these are the different stages through which you are going. So it's usually five cycles. And one cycle lasts about 90 minutes. Um, uh, and, and when you're looking at when you are in a waking state, that's when beta uh, brain waves are the highest. Now, when you are entering into the dream world, uh, the first phase, um, you will experience and what we will see in the EEG, uh, the, uh, uh, the sort of uh, electric signals from the brain, increased uh, uh, alpha and theta activity, especially theta uh, waves. And once you drop into the delta dream, that's when the delta waves, the very slow moving waves are, are significant. And you come back from there, you, you, you climb up, climb up uh, back to, uh, uh, to almost like a wakeful state, but that's REM sleep. And during that state, your body is, uh, and your neck muscles are paralyzed. Um, and probably from the evolutionary perspective, that was because um, you are actually almost acting out. So that sort of uh, really par paralyzes you so that you don't hurt yourself during the REM sleep. But these guys who are doing different kind of sleep tracking, they can look into your movement. They, they can look into if you are not moving at certain times during the night, then perhaps you are in certain stages of sleep. And you can also look into the actual electric signals like what the CEO sleep manager used to do. I don't know how Pedit is doing like uh, separating REM sleep, which is 
what the iPhone apps or Android apps can, are not very capable of doing, but maybe he will tell you. Uh, another system that you might want to look into hacking is the biological clock, so the so, so-called circadian rhythm. So it was uh, uh, recognized when they put animals or plants in totally total darkness that they still kept certain clocks. So it's not completely your body is not completely synced with light and the the the, the uh, st stages of the day uh, based on on uh, the uh, movement of the sun. Uh, but there are certain other sort of uh, rhythms uh, that your body is tuned into and synchronized into. And uh, during the day you can probably see that actually what is happening during the, the night that you're going through these 90 minute cycles. Those cycles continue also during the day. Sometimes you are at certain time of the day you are more alert, better performing, you know, your system is working better. Some parts of the day not so. And uh, why would you be interested in these things is to really, you know, look into, for example, when should you be napping or when should you be exercising or when should you be doing different kind of things and why you should really try to keep into uh, waking up around the same time to get the light stimulation or why should you, for example, go to sleep at the same time um, uh, and, and what happens if you miss that window. So another 90 minutes you are more alert again. Um, the third system that you would look into hacking is the, the melatonin pathway. So the different uh, pathways through which the body produces melatonin, which is essential for falling asleep and, and is related to that. Many of ha you have probably heard of this substance. But the body produces melatonin from uh, different uh, sort of uh, precursors, um, uh, starting from L-tryptophan to 5-HTP and, and going forward to serotonin and melatonin. And there are different vitamins and nutrients that are needed for the body to support the body of producing this. So if you want to hack you know, your um, ability to produce melatonin, if you start by taking melatonin directly, you are causing havoc in the whole, whole system. So you are interfering with the natural process and that can basically bring that out of balance. So you may want to start actually instead of starting directly from melatonin and sleeping pills actually from from the different building blocks. So understanding these kind of different kind of systems through which your body works is is, is really important. And by the way we dive deep into these systems in the book and uh, and look into the science and everything is very, very well uh, referenced in there. Uh, hundreds of studies went into this. Now, um, one thing that is important, though, is to, if you look at, for example, blind people, they sometimes have sleeping problems. And it's probably because actually we are using the sun to reset uh, the biological clock. And if you want to reset that, uh, it, most important time to do that is in the morning hours. And uh, during the morning hours, you will be able to, by producing enough blue wavelength, so the shortest wavelength of light, uh, at, the, at the highest possible intensity, so 1,000 lux is pretty good. About office light lighting or something like that is about two to 500 lux, and the sun can be tens of thousands of lux. So uh, using some kind of light uh, to stimulate, especially during the dark winter nights, uh, during the morning hours actually helps your body to reset the the, the, the rhythm and then help you to actually start the melatonin production at the right time. Now in the evening, triggering sleep is also essential. So um, blue wavelength actually blocks melatonin production. And in the evening, if you use computer screens or you look at your phone as the last thing when you go to sleep, you have, you know, nowadays we have LED lights and LEDs are five times more effective in blocking uh, the production of melatonin according to studies compared to just light bulbs. So you may want to actually somehow stimulate uh, sunset. So uh, increasing the red wavelength and, and reducing the amount of blue wavelength, you might want to use some computer applications like FLUX or, or sometimes, you know, if you really want to work late, there are sunglasses like this one, these guys, uh, which basically block the blue wavelength and uh, you can continue doing whatever you're doing. So, uh, but it looks ridiculous. So, um, but uh, what can you do if you want to be high performing and still, you know, doing their last, last emails? 
um, sleeping pills. This is something that people, you know, if they have sleeping problems, they go to a doctor, they expect to get a sleeping pill. Very few doctors actually want to give you those because those are actually quite dangerous, many, many of them, or can mess up a number of systems if you start using them. So try to find some alternative ways. Uh, just as an example, Halcyon was, was, a, was a sleeping uh, pill product and in the 91 it was drawn out of the market because it actually caused depression and uh, people were just forgetful and, and, and sort of almost dementic when they used those medications. But it's a big business and you have to understand that of course these pharmaceutical companies want to sell you these, uh, these, these products, but maybe just something you can buy from a grocery store can actually also be quite effective or even better. So I will go deeper into that. So looking at your bedroom, so what would you be looking in upgrading your sort of mecca of, uh, of sleeping? Uh, here we have a biohacker's bedroom. So really important is to block uh, the sources of light. So if you have any LEDs or anything there going on, you know, just put some black tape on it. Um, uh, air conditioning is really important so that your airways are well, well treated and um, rather than using nasal sprays and so on, maybe you want to invest in an air purifier. I just bought one and I think it's the best investment I have done. Uh, in all of the biohacks, uh, I would say one of the most important ones is actually just an air purifier in a, when you, if you live in a city uh, in an apartment building. It really feels like you are on the coast, you know, all the time, and it's it's great, and you never have any sneezing problems. Now there are certain supplements you can use. Mag uh, many Finnish people, like third of uh, Finnish people, are magnesium deficient, uh, and you may want to also supplement uh, with that. That's actually, in addition to vitamin D, one of the sort of few supplements you should really take, according to many studies. And uh, you can use. Uh, I think it's really key to think of your bedroom as a place where you only sleep. So, you know, setting it up in such a way that the light, lighting and all that is, is really just uh, in place for sleeping. And uh, thermoregulation is important. Your body temperature drops during the night and, and helping your body to get into the sleep is key here. Now, there are many other ways, you know, which you might want to look into. In the book, we will detail a lot of uh, uh, different approaches, how you can start hacking uh, your sleep. And uh, if you did all of them, probably all your time would go into sleep hacking because you can do it all day long. Um, but really, it's really about how do you find the 20% the, the that really works for you? What kind of supplements might be uh, supportive that doesn't you know, uh, mess up your uh, sleep cycles and, and so on? Uh, how do you avoid waking up during the night, making sure you have enough uh, nighttime blood sugar going on. Uh, um, how do you, what kind of foods to choose, what to eat in the evening so that you don't block your, uh, or, or, or increase the alertness or, or somehow, you know, mess up your uh, uh, brain waves even. So certain foods, uh, and, and if you look at, for example, just uh, uh, sleep blocking substances like uh, cacao or tea, theobromine, uh, uh, or, or uh, caffeine in, in include products. So it's about six hours, half time to fall asleep. So, um, but if you want to biohack that, maybe you want to take some, according to studies, you can take theanine, which is the active ingredient in green tea. You take 100, 200 milligrams, and it will, uh, uh, what it will do, it will abort the effects of uh, coffee. Coffee reduces uh, uh, theta and alpha waves, and theanine will bring up the alpha waves, if I remember correctly, and it will actually help you to induce sleep on, on stage one, to move from one, stage one to two. But your mileage where it may vary, so, you know, if you're looking into these methods, you know, measure yourself it's, if it's really working for you. Uh, there are, of course, all kinds of other things, you know, fr from your sensory perspective, we may want to look into noise cancellation and uh, eye shades are obvious, if, especially if you are traveling, but they are, you know, you could go in, uh, hardcore, you know, electric stimulation, driving certain uh, electric signals into your brain to, to induce uh, uh, certain states. Um, I, I, I actually really like uh, binaural beats, so to your brain will synchronize to certain 
certain uh, frequencies and uh, to induce certain states of uh, um, brain waves, uh, and, and that's pretty interesting how you can use sound also in there. So how to wake up then? Uh, uh, one of the key, re key things to do here is to simulate nature. So sort of increasing the light slowly. If you have a totally dark room, increase it slowly with some kind of uh, sleeping light that w or wake up light. And uh, maybe increase, you know, some kind of like rivers, birds singing or something in your surroundings. And you might also use a tracking device uh, uh, for your s different sleep cycles and make sure that your alarm cl clock is actually uh, going on at that phase where you are o already coming to the light sleep stage. And once you wake up, uh, cortisol production kicks in. It's about one hour after waking up. You can help your body by giving it a little bit of salt. Uh, that's what your adrenal glands will grave for, and they will get it from somewhere. So if you take a cup of uh, water with a little bit of salt, that helps to, to boot it up. Maybe a little bit of lemon that uh, balances actually your uh, stomach acids, and, and then some inversion because of your lymphic system has been blocked uh, oftentimes, or just in a uh, stale state for the whole night. So do something about that, you know, stand on your head or do a little bit of exercises. And then hot shower, get the muscles moving, and cold shower to, uh, to, to once again close the uh, porous membranes. Um, looking at the different sleep apps, we will have a demonstration on Bedit in a moment. But uh, from the sleep tracking perspective, there is a lot of different devices. Uh, if you look at just the different wristbands, these are the ones that I know of. If someone of you knows about some other devices that are similar, uh, let me know. And um, by the way, on the uh, because this, this field is moving so goddamn fast, the book is going to be based on, so every chapter actually, all the links, all the product recommendations, everything is not on the book, all the research links will be there, but the, the research, research paper uh, references, but all the links will be actually on a mobile site, so we have like hundreds of, of links on a mobile site available, uh, how to hack different areas and what kind of uh, things we have figured out might be interesting. So just to help you to do the research, uh, what's possible, we have done that for you already. Um, but maybe you want to start by with a mobile app and then moving into some more sophisticated uh, devices. Just to finalize, give you a couple of uh, recipes, so putting all together, so there's many things that you can hack, but what should you start from? And I'm, a, I'm an expert on hacking my uh, sleep on an airplane. Uh, there is a recipe of that on the book, but uh, to tell you some, some ideas of how to nap. So once you know the cycles, 20 minutes is the maximum, otherwise you will, will easily drop into deep sleep and waking from there is not very nice. So either go for 90 minutes or less than 20 minutes and it will really increase your mental performance uh, if you do it just like, you know, 15-20 minutes. And if you want to be really kicking uh, once you wake up, so in one study they recognized that uh, people did 33% less mistakes when they took 200 milligrams of caffeine before uh, napping. Actually, caffeine, ca caffeine, you can drink a cup of coffee, uh, that's coffee nap, so it takes about 40 minutes to kick in, uh, and so on. But uh, one way how I like to do it at home is to take a spike mat, take a cup of coffee, uh, put some earphones with binaural beats, uh, synchronize that with the theta brain waves, and just let go. And that's amazing when you wake up. The spike mat will make sure that you wake up exactly around 90 minutes, and you're totally refreshed. You don't need any kind of uh, uh, alarm clock for that. Uh, then, what kind of foods you might want to eat in the evening? So, Jaakko Halmetoja kindly sort of produced one recipe here. So, this is unihiakka, sand of sleep. So, it's, it's designed to help your body to build those building blocks that you will need uh, for your body to produce melatonin and to fall asleep. And uh, so, so, taking some almonds uh, is important for the precursors in there. Uh, some honey, for example, for the black sugar during the night. And, uh, and magnesium, you can empty the capsule directly in it. You take a cup and then you pour a little bit of uh, some liquid, for example, yogi bedtime or some other sort of uh, tea that doesn't have any coffee in it. 
you might want to use, uh, if you're hardcore, you use an extract of Valeriana, Kavakan, passion flower. Four Sigma Foods has uh, one blend of that, for example. So, <coughs> so it's really, you know, uh, effective thing to do and uh, you will definitely fall asleep easily. So uh, I hope that this material that we are producing will help you to master sleep and become, you know, the, the, the Zen master of sleeping, just like Dalai Lama uh, envisioned. And um, uh, so, so we will, in a similar manner, we are going through these different areas. So what kind of technologies, biological tools exist, what kind of quantified self methods you can use to do the upgrade. And uh, every book chapter is actually not just printed or on an iBook, but also online as a uh, list of recommendations, but also conversations so you guys can expand on it. Because I'm not an expert. I'm happy to invite all real experts to, to join this. I'm just a hacker. So now we are going to show a real life hack. So uh, uh, Lasse, we, he has kindly volunteered to show some of his uh, sleeping data and, uh, and, and the application we are going to look into is, uh, is Bedit. So uh, please, you have uh, five uh, minutes, maybe more. Okay. okay, thank you, Teemu. And good evening. I'm Lasse, CEO and co-founder of Bedit. So I first would like to shortly tell you about what is Bedit all about. Uh, Teemu mentioned that there are several devices that can track sleep but most of them are somehow wearable devices and very few really likes to wear anything uh, added to your body when you sleep. Uh, they are uncomfortable uh, in many ways and they can prevent the natural sleep. And also you can find uh, several apps that you can have uh, and, and sleeping, sleeping with the iPhone you can get information but then most often the information and the quality of the results is, is limited. And we are kind of coming in into between here to help with the solution that you don't need to wear a sensor, but you can still have a little bit more information about your sleep and, and wellness while you sleep. So our, our product is based on a thin film sensor that is attached to your mattress like a sticker under the bed seats. You don't feel it while you sleep naturally in your own bed and it uh, measures the forces coming from your body. So it means it measures your movements, but it also measures the tiny forces originating in your body, like cardiac contraction and, and breathing movement, so that uh, then our algorithms can analyze it uh, to give information about your sleep quality, heart rate, breathing, snoring, uh, stress, and this type of things of your sleep and wellness. And what we have currently on the, on the market is a Bedit professional version that is a gateway that sends all the information to the web app. And there, different professionals can, can use that or uh, also quantify itself for other uh, people who understand a lot of raw material and raw information and can, can use that information. So that has a lot of uh, opportunities to have uh, various data of your sleep and, and wellness. And, uh, this is currently used in over 20 countries by doctors, personal trainers, researchers and, and active consumers like biohackers. So and here, here <coughs> is some data that you have uh, yeah. gathered. So tell us about the story, what we are seeing here. Let me see if I can somehow... So you will ha have to be able it. to sort of scroll it on, on the yeah. other on so the this screen. But I can do it for you. Okay, just if you can do it for me. Yeah. So this is a dashboard view of our Pedit Professional web dashboard that can give a very detailed information. This is a monthly view uh, to overall claims of how many hours you have slept each night, how many hours have been deep sleep, uh, and uh, what is the change compared to the previous month. And then you have a kind of diary functions that you can give own feedback, how you feel, do you feel positive, negative, and also uh, you can tag different aspects that you think uh, might affect positively to your sleep and that might affect negatively. And there you can see jet lag after I've been away a week. A week. And then this is uh, one night opened and I can see there the details of, of single night the total amount of sleep, the deep sleep, d sleep efficiency, but also the sleep stages, the light sleep, deep sleep and REM sleep. 
We do this classification based on the movement behavior, heart rate behavior, and breathing behavior. So we are not as accurate as polysomnography that uses uh, EEG signals measured from the directly from the electrical activity of the brains, but we can get uh, about 80% accuracy compared to polysomnography. Yeah. I, I have used Zio and alongside with this thing, and I've also used these apps, so I just want to see how this thing is performing, and it's doing very well against Zio, uh, which is actually looking into your actual brain waves. Uh, these kind of movement trackers are quite inaccurate, but you get a pretty good picture anyway. And yeah. But you don't get the REM sleep part, which this one does. Yeah, it's too bad that CEO, uh, CEO went out of the business. It's, uh, they actually tried to license our technology and replace their headband before they went out of the business. And that was our luck, because now they are behind us and in our team in, on, on US side. So <laughs> that was also some luck for us for us in that. And then uh, you can see movements, heart rate, uh, averages, you can even get heart rate variability, so you can get heart rate intervals, uh, you can get clinical level actigraphy, you can get uh, heart rate variability analyzed, so you can get information about working of your autonomous nervous system, the stress and recovery status. And then you get uh, uh, information about the sleep environment. You get noises in decibels. You can see snoring. You can see light levels of the bedroom, temperature of the bedroom, uh, your stress level based on heart rate variability and uh, resting heart rate and your resting heart rate. So this information can be used then to manage stress and, and, and for example, to avoid overstress syndrome if you're an athlete. Are you recording when people speak in their dreams? No, we don't do audio recordings, at, at least not at the moment. We are thinking to maybe add something that when you have these snoring and noise events that you can go back and see what actually happened. But at, at the moment we don't do audio recordings because there's so much resistance against it. <laughs> actually, there are a couple of apps. Snore Lab for iPhone. It will only turn on the recorder when you are you know, snoring. And then there is some kind of uh, talk, sleep, sleep talk, or some kind of this kind of app, and it's pretty nice because you can share your speaking with the whole world, you know. And then you can browse through pretty ridiculous, you know, sp speeches, you know, or Benjamin Roosevelt's going on on their sleep. So, okay. So as a, now, as a last step, what we have, uh, like I said, this is normally used by professionals, and professionals are explaining these results to the users and and letting them know what they can do differently, helping them. And now we are trying to put all this into the app, mobile app, and bring this to the consumer so that the latest sensor has Bluetooth and it connects directly with the mobile uh, smartphone. And uh, the application does the analysis, so you don't need to send the information to the internet. And you get uh, readily analyzed results, but you also get personalized coaching what you can do. So we have kind of uh, put some of that professional information that was needed personally previously into the application. So this is the how it works is that uh, you have a, a user profile where you have a, some kind of a little bit of personal information about you and then the very important is to understand what's your key interest like uh, is, is it a general well-being are you trying, trying to tackle overweight are you trying to manage stress uh, trying to solve sleeping issues, or are you uh, trying to optimize your training and recovery if you're an athlete? So based on this user profile and based on the measurements, you get then uh, uh, information about sleep. Let's say, let's look at the, some of the, there at least is a good, uh, good sleep points, 88 points. So what it shows, it shows the timeline of, of what has happened during the night. So it's those noise events, snoring events, when you're in the bed, when you're sleeping, a little bit information about the sleep quality. And so you get an overview of the, on a night, uh, nightly timeline, what has happened. You get an information about your resting heart rate, amount of sleep, and uh, you also, uh, <laughs> also get the, uh, get the sleep score breakdown. There will be, we will be adding much more lines in there it's just uh, we are just bringing this to the to the market so basically you have like um, 
not a Facebook timeline of your day, but you have a similar timeline of your night. Yeah, you can yeah. you can continue to have that daily timeline also cover your night. Yeah, I, I really would like like to see the status updates <laughs> on that. <laughs> Maybe that's that uh, that. Uh, how do you how do you talk while you sleep? So, application can be added there. So, and then you have a little bit social aspect. You can uh, share your uh, results and what you're trying to improve, and you can give your own personal feedback how you feel yourself. And then, based on your profile, based on the measurement, based on your own feedback, it can personalize coaching tips. Because here I have a very good sleep scores and everything is very well. Also, the coaching is quite. Uh, going into already quite deep and, and uh, overall. But if you have low sleep scores, it, it will be more like step and step guidance how you can, can improve your sleep and optimize your training. So, so what have you learned? <coughs> so give us some details. You know, you have been developing, uh, running as a CEO. So what have you learned of your own sleep? Well, I can give a nice example. As, as right now, we, uh, we exposed this new it to the public uh, on an Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign and it was extremely successful. So in 10 weeks we got uh, over 5,000 units pre-ordered and prepaid worth over half a million dollars. So it has been a very uh, huge uh, popularity and, and publicity for us and that caused a lot of contacts from all kind of... So it's, it's been like a positive problems but a lot of positive stress as well. At the moment I have a little bit over 3,000 unread emails in my in inbox and, and it's, uh, it's, it's been a little bit crazy. And here I can show the... For example, if I take a look at the data just uh, day before the Indiegogo campaign started on August 7th as we, we launched it really on August 8th, my sleep score was 81. And for example, my resting heart rate was 53, and I was sleeping pretty well and getting quite, quite uh, simple instructions how uh, how to sleep. Then, if I go after, right after, then the campaign ends. Here, I can see that during the campaign there are like <laughs> very nice, nice scores. scores. Some some weekends I have a even even pretty good. Maybe it's just coming back from the Silicon Valley or something, and then again going like. A, uh, quite low points and let me go to the end of the campaign now to see kind of the difference in uh, okay there it starts to end I'm getting again back to the more better better results and also uh, also getting back to the lower heart rate but just uh, before the end of the campaign my heart rate in rest was 75, so it was up 12 points as compared to where I, no, no, actually up 20, <laughs> 20, 22 points up to where I started before the campaign. And now I'm uh, getting back, and so I've been using this very effectively to also to manage stress so that I don't pushing it over the edge. <laughs> Thank you, Lasse. I hope you get through your 30,000 of emails and uh, good luck with your product. 3,000, 3, not 30,000, but still. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.